Hi, this is JP from Not Lights Over Arkham. In this video, I will be talking about my uh, thoughts on the whole InSmart Conspiracy campaign. Uh, I have already finished up the campaign, so I thought I share my thoughts about the campaign as a whole and do I like it, do I hate it, uh, are there good or bad scenarios? Find out. So let's get started. So we got in Smart Conspiracy uh, at the later part of last year, 2020, and I just got uh, into the Maelstrom scenario uh, last week. I made a video and played that with Stella, but uh, we will be talking about the campaign as a whole in this video. I already shared my short thoughts on that at the end of that video, but I thought I'll make a separate video. So there will be spoilers throughout this uh, video about some game mechanics and I won't go into detail about the story. You can uh, find out more about that story. I will mention if the scenario is a flashback scenario or present date scenario. So that is maybe the main spoilery thing about the story I will be talking about. I will be focusing on mainly the true solo experience of this scenario because I mainly play in true solo. But as uh, a side note, I have been playing this with a couple of friends as a three player campaign and I have almost finished that campaign also. So, um, let's just scoot this aside here. So the first scenario is the pit of despair. So I'm not uh, going into that big of detail about every card or anything like that. I just uh, want to have uh, something to flip through to keep remembering everything. There's a lot of stuff to go through. So the Pit of Despair is an interesting uh, first scenario. You will uh, drop into a catacombs style uh, tunnel, uh, tidal tunnel where you have to find a way out. So the map is built out of these uh, locations, tidal tunnel locations. You also have the unfamiliar chamber where you start the game with uh, from and uh, the objective is to find uh, the sealed exit and there is also an uh, enemy that will uh, follow you the amalgam. So the first scenario is definitely a tough one. You really have to have uh, um, a deck that can move fast, gather clues fast, and uh, either fight well or evade well. At least in true solo, I have found out that evading and running away from the enemies is maybe better or uh, action efficient, more action efficient than fighting the enemies. So uh, you might save more time by evading and running away. Keep in mind that you might end up in a dead end at some point, uh, depending on how you build the map. So getting past those enemies again might be a bit bit hard. And uh, the scenario introduces the key and also the flawed mechanic. So you are gathering keys and you also have the caves uh, filling up with water so uh, you need to be mindful of where you start or end your turn so if you start and end your turn in a fully flooded location you will take five direct damage if you don't uh, enter a partially flooded or unflooded location and this is a mechanic that will be recurring during the whole campaign in multiple scenarios um, when you finally have all the keys you need, uh, you 
just have to find the uh, sealed exit which I already mentioned and after that you can resign and get out so resigning is the way to beat the scenario and it is a tough scenario uh, you might get swarmed by enemies there are quite a lot of deep one enemies and they are really nasty because the deep ones have the uh, when you when this enemy engages you mechanic so they either deal you damage or horror the, you have to discard cards or lose resources or lose actions or something negative so you need to be mindful of that so you probably don't want to get um, engaged by the same enemies over and over again uh, after you successfully gotten out of the tunnels the next scenario is actually a flashback so you lose consciousness at the end of your, the first scenario after the resolution and the next scenario takes place uh, a few weeks earlier when you were looking for the agent Elena Harper. It happens in Innsmouth, so uh, we have the uh, Finding Agent Harper card and there are possible suspects, possible hideouts and then you have to uh, beat the doom clock so to speak and uh, discover which of these names are not the kidnapper who has uh, kidnapped the L agent harper or and also find out which is the uh, location where so find the location with in which uh, elena harper is being held captive uh, this is actually real a really fun and well done scenario uh, you will have a, a lead deck that you will be uh, drawing cards from using clues to find out which of these uh, suspects are not the kidnapper. At the start of the scenario, you pick one of the suspects and one of the locations to put under this card, and those are the re uh, right answers, but the others are just so you can um, eliminate other suspects and locations. So it's basically clue the Arkham Horror Edition, and it's really fun. Uh, possibly the uh, fa my favorite scenario of this campaign, and I've heard the other players also like this scenario. Uh, Elena Harper is a story asset you can earn if you do well in this scenario, and uh, you will be uh, adding Thomas Dawson to your uh, deck for the flashback versions from different uh, story triggers. Uh, one mechanic in this campaign is the flashback mechanic. So if you complete goals during these uh, scenarios, you might earn flashbacks which will do different things. Uh, one is a, actually that you uh, made the decision to stick together with Thomas Dawson, so uh, he will be is more easily available in some scenarios or something like that and some might uh, make the chaos back easier but uh, this is a really good scenario i really like the vanishing of Lina harper uh, scenario and then uh, we get the first mythos pack of the campaign and it is in too deep so in too deep actually uh, uses the same map as uh, the vanishing of Elena Harper and uh, it is Innsmouth uh, it is laid down on the table as a 3 by 5 so 15 lo locations large map the trick is in this scenario is that some of the routes for uh, the location connection is blocked by barricades so you have to navigate through, out, uh, through the maze of easily uh, passable barricades so some might, might have one barricade some might have three or something like that so of course removing only one barricade is easier than removing all three but the but removing all of the three might make you a really good shortcut so you can uh, get ahead of the uh, enemies and there are a lot of enemies in this scenario 
there is also a way to earn Jaw Sergeant, which is an ally asset that is only for this scenario, and uh, Joe lets you move more uh, efficiently throughout this scenario. So uh, this is also, I, I think this is also a good scenario. Uh, it is a bit swingy sometimes to easily get through uh, without too big of a uh, hindrance from the uh, encounter deck or enemies, but sometimes you might end up <laughs> being stuck with the murder ball of deep ones and that is game over basically. Uh, if you do well, you can earn a Teaching of the Order story asset that helps you uh, along the rest of the campaign by removing uh, curse tokens, uh, unloading a non-sanctum location, and of course, the, maybe the biggest is to uh, defeat a non-elite enemy at your location. And this can actually hit some of the victory point, okay, uh, victory point enemies in the later scenarios. Uh, I. I feel this is also on the top side of the good scenarios in this campaign. Uh, some might say that the uh, map is too big, but I just uh, recommend that you take into note that movement is really important in uh, InSmote when you build your deck. So if you have good movement in your deck, it shouldn't be that of big of a problem. That was a flashback scenario, so the next one is uh, Devil Reef. Uh, oh no, uh, actually Into Deep is not a flashback scenario. Devil Reef is a flashback scenario, so after Into Deep you get to the cars and try to escape Insmut, but you get another flashback where uh, you are heading out to Devil Reef with uh, Agent Dawson, which is the other uh, story ally asset. And uh, the goal of this scenario is to find out what's happening in Devil Reef. So you have uh, a boat which you are uh, piloting throughout Devil Reef. You are visiting different islands and uh, finding keys and finding more keys which will uh, let you find these uh, relic items which are quite good in this campaign. So without going that deep into what these do, I'll let you find out for yourself. But uh, one thing I really want to say about this scenario is that it's so random, it is not that great. So first off, you will randomly choose these Devil Reef Islands, then you will randomly choose these uh, unfathomable beeps, uh, remove some of them so you don't know which, uh, which are uh, in the game. Then you have the tidal tunnel locations again and you shuffle them and they are random. The keys are random uh, and again um, even if you find the keys, uh, the locations you need to use them are random so you don't know which where to go. So this is just a horrific scenario for true solo. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but I don't like this at all as a true solo gamer. But in multiplayer you might do something like drop one investigator off to a location, maybe utilize uh, open gates or um, some other transport um, transportation um, events or assets uh, like mystics have uh, astral, astral travel and uh, rogues have the elusive. So you might just vanish from one island and uh, resurface on another island. So keeping that in mind, you really need to metagame for this uh, scenario to do well in it. And uh, this actually is the do as much as you can style of a scenario, so you might not be able to get all of these, but if you get even one, that's a good result in my opinion. So don't fall into the trap of trying to get all of these, it's really hard. The best I have done is to get two. And that was with, <laughs> that was with metagame and uh, Stella deck that was really fast and uh, efficient in this campaign. Uh, the, uh, encounter deck is also quite punishing 
uh, there are uh, deep one enemies that knock you out of the boat and make your life a living hell. So uh, maybe the weakest scenario in this whole campaign. Uh, at the halfway point of the campaign, uh, we entered the horror in high gear scenario. So after level reef, we get back to the uh, current time and we are back at the cars after in too deep. Uh, in horror in high gear, we drive away from the pursuing uh, uh, hybrids and in smart uh, order, uh, the esoteric or the order of Dagon. Uh, uh, collaborates like we have hit vans and uh, we have uh, hybrid assassins pursuing motor cars and stuff like that. The goal is, of this uh, scenario is to drive the old Innsmouth road and get to the end of the road where we have the So, so our goal is to get to the uh, Falcon Point approach. So when you reach this po uh, location and all undefeated investigators are here, you uh, advance the act and in the scenario. There are a lot of these locations and uh, the trick here is to uh, drive the cars. So if you have to stop your car, you just do an action and flip it over, so you, the car won't move ahead. Why would you want to do that? Is to stop your uh, investigator from moving ahead before you have enough clues to move, because some of these locations deal you damage or horror, depending on which location it is, if you can spend the required number of clues. Uh, there are uh, locations that have a road, road uh, on the keywords here. So when you, for example, have a road tree, you place three in small road locations in front of it. And the trick here is that one of them is a good location to move into. The rest are long way around, which will slow you down and uh, basically make uh, reaching the Falcon Point Lighthouse harder and those stop you from moving so the pursuing enemies which start uh, a couple of uh, locations behind you uh, don't uh, have a chance to catch up with you so uh, stopping the car is uh, necessary sometimes but I have found out that in true solo I rarely ever needed to stop the car in some cases uh, you might need to stop the car if you have a lot of only a few health or damage remaining, uh, health or sanity remaining, so you don't die from the movement or something like that. And there actually is a location that you might just fall out of a cliff if you fail the test, if you can't spend the clues. So be really mindful of uh, when you have to stop the car. But uh, as a Scenario I really like horror in a high gear. It reminds me of uh, the Essex County Express, but uh, maybe <laughs> in uh, uh, like well high gear, so to speak. So um, really interesting scenario. And then we have a light in the fog scenario. So uh, this is another map that gets big and. Uh, uh, well, th this is uh, a scenario in a big where there is a big spoiler coming here. So if you haven't played this, I recommend stopping the video before you hear the next thing I'm about to say. So this is the scenario where there is the sudden death uh, possibility in this campaign, and. Uh, you might wonder that, okay, this is only the uh, sixth scenario of the campaign, so it's a quite it's quite early in the campaign. Uh, the reason is that this is also a current time scenario, and the next scenario is a flashback scenario. So it would be impossible for the flashback scenario to have the instant death um, 
resolution because then uh, it would cause a time paradox or something like that. So uh, getting back to in a light in the fog, this also has quite a lot of randomness in it. Uh, the first part of the scenario is straightforward. There are a set locations like the Falcon Point Gatehouse, cliff sides, stairwells, uh, keeper's cottage, lantern room and basement. So uh, these start in play and they are not randomized. Uh, but after you get to the basement, uh, you find the sunken grotto and then you make uh, the tidal tunnel deck and have random locations, random keys, and you have to find uh, specific locations. So we have the pump room, which is really crucial. So you can uh, unflood sunken archives, shrine of Hydra and the moon room. So the moon room is really important for you to uh, get unfloated so you can activate the resign ability later in the scenario. Uh, there is a resign ability on the Falcon Point Gatehouse, but uh, spoiler alert, these locations get removed at one point of the scenario, so you might lose your ability to resign, and after that the only way to not die in this scenario is to uh, resign out of the moon room. There are more deep one enemies in this, and uh, the elite enemy Osiris uh, is quite nasty. It, Osiris has a lot of uh, health, and also there is a an really annoying uh, step in the scenario that even if you've defeated Osiris, he comes back if the game goes on long enough. So. You might have to kill it twice or defeat it at least once after the later part of the scenario. But at that point you are running out of time and might run out of time to kill, kill him off. But uh, this is a decent scenario, not the best and not the worst of the campaign. And at least I was surprised about the sudden death. Next we have a Lair of Dagon. So, Lair of Dagon is another flashback scenario. So, this is basically uh, Agent Dawson and your investigator infiltrating the esoteric order of Dagon's uh, house or, or the church or whatever. But uh, you are looking for clues and finding out what's happening. And you actually run into the culprit. You uh, be un covered in uh, the vanishing of Elena Harper and there are nasty enemies here and there is also Dagon enemy which starts in slumber and uh, after you uh, search the ground level and upper levels of the uh, esoteric order you go down to another uh, basement or tidal tunnel uh, map and there is the lair of Dagon location which you need to find and uh, then uh, you need to get clues off of this location and onto the act to win the scenario. And this is an okay scenario, nothing really special. The big uh, thing in this scenario is that even if you're not running uh, blesses or curses, you will be adding curse tokens into the chaos pack during this scenario. So keep that in mind when you're playing. And uh, you can't die in that because it's a flashback. So the last scenario of this campaign is the Into the Maelstrom. And this is another scenario where there is a lot of... Well, the Lair of Dagon also had flooding and keys. And uh, actually, a light in the fog also has flooding and keys, so I think only horror in high gear and uh, actually horror in high gear is the only scenario in this campaign that doesn't use the flood 
or the keys. Everything else uses either one of those. So uh, you start at the gate of Yuantle and uh, you build a tidal tunnel map around it. You need to find some clues and then you advance to Yuantle and then you need to uh, unflood the city to win the campaign or the scenario. So there are these Sanctum locations which are fully flooded and then there are these Guantle locations which are partially flooded and you need to find a way to drain the city and remove uh, all of the uh, flood tokens of the locations to in the campaign or the scenario. And there is Dagon but there is also Mother Hydra and these both uh, actually Depending on how you finish the layer of Dagon, uh, Dagon either starts in deep slumber or awakened and enraged, but um, Hydra always starts as uh, deep, deep in slumber. There are more enemies, and there are Dagon Brood or Hydra Brood, and they affect either Hydra or Dagon. And uh, that is it. So. Find keys, uh, unflood the city, win the campaign. The big uh, secret in this uh, scenario is that uh, depending on how many uh, flashbacks you have earned during the campaign and which uh, requirements you've met, uh, you might uh, have all the seven keys in play. And if you do and you have all of them on locations, you get extra uh, acts so you get the you always get the city in the version one but if you have uh, some special requirements you get the in uh, city of the deep version two and three and uh, you can unlock the whole in smart conspiracy if you get all of this uh, i for example only got this one so i won the campaign but there remained many mysteries to unravel so i wasn't good enough with my investigator. So uh, that is basically the campaign in a nutshell. Um, short descriptions of all uh, each of the scenarios. Uh, I think this is a really interesting and well done campaign. Maybe the only problem with this campaign is that for a blind playthrough, this is not that fun to play, at least in my opinion. I actually had to play each, scenar each scenario at least twice to not mess up with all of the rules you need to keep track of. So there are a lot of micromanaging of uh, remembering to read each card in play and there are a ton of them. And remembering each small rule that remember to shuffle one encounter card to the lead deck or something like that. like in each scenario. So I think this is starting to get a bit too heavy to be uh, like a enjoyable experience on your blind playthrough. After the blind playthrough, uh, when you have learned all of the mechanics of each scenario, you can really focus on the story and focus on the mechanics and focus on playing the game and not micromanaging everything. So uh, also saying that uh, you just can't build a deck which is like really uh, good at everything. You have to focus on a specific uh, style of play. For example, I played this with uh, Stella in high evasion mode. So I was evading each deep one enemy I ran into. I didn't kill a single deep one enemy the whole campaign. I actually, I think. The only enemy I killed was maybe one uh, copy of rats and uh, the suspect that we discover in the vanishing of Elena Harper. But each other enemy I just uh, evaded and ran away from. So saying that uh, evasion is a real strong way to play this. But then you have to uh, have special kind of cards to mitigate some of the bad encounter cards. Uh, the cards like enemies or um, treacheries that stay in play. So, for example, um, 
Survivor has a lot of cards that deal with the enemies that spawn or, or are in your way, so you can get past them. Um, so the cards actually that get uh, placed on locations like Hiding Spot and uh, Snare Trap are really good in this scenario. I have never played those cards before, or at least not that much, but I found out those are really uh, strong in this campaign. Also, some of the scenarios really uh, need for you to have some way to move efficiently. So I think in multiplayer in Devil Reef you really need to have open gates, uh, to open uh, pathways between uh, different islands. So you are not completely reliant on the ship to get you to where you want to go and uh, stuff like that. So you have to be mindful of when building your deck that you you can can tackle the campaign better. Also, uh, I found out that the uh, Alter Fate from Survivor is really good to remove uh, the malfunctions in those scenarios you are using the uh, vehicles. So, for example, when your, your car malfunctions, you just Alter Fate and you don't have to uh, mind that malfunction, especially with Stella. Uh, Stella has a low intellect, so uh, when I ran into uh, the malfunction, I just alter faded it away, so I didn't have to uh, try and try again to beat the high intellect test. But uh, what am I going to say about the campaign as a whole? Well, it's not my favorite scenario. That spot is for now reserved to uh, Pat to Carcosa. Uh, it's definitely up in my top three, so uh, maybe maybe uh, top two or top three. So I, I think this is one of the better campaigns so far, but uh, as a blind playthrough it's not uh, that high, but after playing it once and learning the scenarios, when you're playing it a second time and you can meta build your deck and uh, know a bit what's coming. It's really a fun and challenging uh, challenging campaign to play. Uh, that being said, um, I am really looking forward to the next campaign we will get later this year. We still don't know when and we probably will get the return to um, the Circle Undone before that campaign, so looking forward to that as well. Because Circle Undone is a decent campaign, but it could be a lot better. And I'm really hoping the tarot cards in that are really good and can be added to any campaign. But uh, I can recommend the Insmat Conspiracy, but bear in mind that uh, it is a punishing blind play, so don't get discouraged on your first game through it, through uh, the Insmat Conspiracy, and just build your deck accordingly, so you can tackle the different uh, hard aspects of the campaign. So, I hope you guys liked this overview of the campaign. Uh, if you like to hear more about different campaigns in the future, let me know in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching and until next time.